I'm so glad you could stop by. It's a beautiful day outside for today. I hope it's that way other days, but I'm really impressed by the sun coming in and it just looks so pretty. So it's a pretty day and I have a story for you. My name is Eloise Schottler. I'm a storyteller and uh, here I am again for another one. This is a story I've pulled out. I was reading some new, new papers you know, that I found. They weren't new finds, they're old paper, papers, because I wrote down a lot of things, and here it is. It's a story about my grandmother uh, and about other people. And it's a story about having your own memories. That's an important thing, you know. Now, not too far away, my telephone rang early in the morning. I don't get early in the morning telephone, but I did. And I went and got it, lifted it up, Eloise. And I recognized that voice immediately. It was my cousin, Jim. Now, Jim and I were raised together. We're both from North Carolina, Charlotte. He's a little younger than I am. Uh, his mother is my aunt. And my father is his uncle, you know, so we were raised together. And he started saying something and I thought, this is wonderful. Here I am. I protect myself from what we all know that it's COVID and that you have to wear a mask if you are required to and you have to look out for that, other things, and just keep yourself in a safer area. So I'm not running around just trying to pick up strangers because I don't know anything about them and they don't know anything about me. And here was my cousin, and I was lucky because he's on the telephone. His voice was so familiar. It's got that laugh. He's living in North Carolina. I used to, but now for years, I'm a Marylander. I live here in Maryland. I've lost a lot of my accent, but he hasn't. So it's a real pleasure to have him call on. He just wanted to chat, just to talk, and hoping, I was hoping now that seeing him there, that we could have a chance to talk about memories, about things we did when we were kids uh, and we could catch up with each other. But the other thing, I wanted to ask him for his memories. Okay, I would do that. His grandmother, my grandmother, lived in a big house on Central Avenue. They had built that house in 1912. And she had eight children by the time she was done, plus the fact that then she began to have others, other children, which were us. I was born in the early 40s, in the 40s. Jimmy was born just about that, but he was still hmm, younger than me. And there were a lot of kids coming along all the time. That was a very making them up family. Um, I told him that part of what I was doing to keep myself busy and to keep myself enjoying the days that I was doing some writing about the family as it was about things that happened uh, when we were young and that sort of thing and I started talking about my memories and then I thought to myself, don't be silly here. Ask him his questions. You want to know what he remembers. Because the way I feel about that is that if he tells me his memories, he'll water mine. He'll make my memories sharper, stronger. They won't be his memories. They'll be mine. I'll grow out of them and they'll be stronger before they were watered a little bit. Jimmy 
What's your best memory of Nanny's house on Central Avenue? Now, I knew that there were memories in that big house. I knew it, especially because our group of cousins, our group, I had a, a girl three months older than me, and she was number one. Number one. I was number two. And then there was a Sam, who was number three. And then we moved one more time, and we did Jimmy. Two of my sisters and Jimmy. We got a group and another group. And so that was really what made it so much fun for us. What did Nanny do for you? Well, number one, we all loved her. And she seemed to be interested in loving of us too. And then she made wonderful, good, tasting Southern cooking. And any time any of us came over there, for day or night, she would feed us. Man, that was good. They had a side yard now that their uh, children were adults. They had the grandchildren and they had a big yard and we would go out. She usually would go out there and sit with us to make sure that nothing was happening that would hurt. And we had lots of fun. And then I said, well, you know, what else? What else did you think of, Jimmy? And he got really quiet. He did, he got quiet. And he had to think back. I had walked in with a lot of memories on my mind, but he didn't. And so she's in being quiet. He was thinking what he would tell me. And all of a sudden, he drew in a deep breath. And he looked at me and he said, when somebody asks me a question like that, I always think of the fire first. What do you mean, the fire first? I don't remember you having any fire. What do you mean, fire? Eloise, and you had to have heard about the day that our cousin Tommy was here with us. And we were working in the garage. You remember there's this big garage at the end of the world of the yard. Well, yeah, I remember about that, but I never saw you doing any work in it. How old were you? Hmm. 10, 11. That's all? Yes. Yes. And he and I took our things into the garage and closed the big doors. And we started working because we were making bombs. Bombs? I never heard any bombs going off over there. Well, you wouldn't have. The ones that we were making would go up or they'd catch fire. And that day, the day I'm talking about, all of the things that we had and had made set up a fire. They burst into fire. Smoke was coming out the windows of that garage and we ran out, opened the doors and ran out and Nanny looked down and she saw us and she saw that we were running out of there and that there was fire and smoke and she called the police and she called the firemen and she was fit to be tough. I wasn't there that day, Jimmy. Tell me some more about it. How was it? Well, it wasn't fun. I can tell you that right now. It was kind of fun to watch it. You know, we made the fire and then we, it was a fabulous big fire. And then he and I looked at each other, just like we we're looking together today. We were looking through the computer. And we started laughing, just laughing. I loved his laugh all the time. I loved it. And it was just like being children 
big kids together again. And after he called his breath, his breath, he looked at me and he says, do you remember how it was in the breakfast room? Yeah, I do. The refrigerator was made with nine doors on it. It was built into a long wall at the end of the day. They were used to serving food to a lot of kids and a lot of other people. And the other thing that was so funny to me, Eloise, do you remember that she kept a special jar? She did. She kept a special jar for her special things that she wanted to hire, to save, to really make things taste better. She calls it the e-leavings, the vegetable leavings. I'm telling you, we started laughing. Just the whole idea of having a jar of vegetable leavings. After I saw him for a while, I put another one in my refrigerator. Do any of you have a jar that keeps the lady leavings? It was really so good. So good. I never expected to have Jimmy's phone call. And he couldn't stay all day talking to me on the telephone. I hardly had a chance to tell him that I was going with Nanny. Now, I was at that time 14 years old, and she'd invited me to go to the Visual Light movie with her to see a new British British movie. And I said, yes, I want to come. I loved it. I laughed and I loved it. People said in the family, her daughters would say, mom, you're just nothing but an angle aisle. You read their books, you talk about them, you go to their movies and you just are so knowledgeable. And I thought to myself later, I suddenly did. I did get to London. She never did. Her grandparents were brought over to the US in the middle of the 1800s. She was British, all right. She was a British. And I'm so pleased that she would, except for the fact that when Jim and I did go to London, I couldn't tell her all the things that we saw while we were there. And I know that she must have been thinking about it and that she would have loved it. She would have just loved it. So your memories are for you and for others. And if each one of you talks and is interested, your memories will grow right beside you. It's a wonderful thing. But be sure that you have some water to flick on your memories. They'll be stronger. Take care.